Hi, welcome to the Comfy Red Couch. My name is Tracy and I'm coming to you from Toronto. Today I have a co-host, Tasha, and she probably won't do very much, but um, she's pretty to look at. So anyway, welcome to the Comfy Red Couch. As I said, I am Tracy and you can find me on Ravelry as Tracy RR and on Instagram as Comfy Red Couch. Today I'm going to talk about lots of crafty things that I've been up to this past week and some crafty things I plan to get up to this coming week. I have a little bit of a yarn to show. I've got some unfinished objects to show. I have a finished object, but I can't show that one. So, but I'll talk about it and I'll show the yarn for it, which is just as exciting. So anyway, welcome to the Comfy Red Couch. And for anyone who is new to the podcast, I'm so glad you've stopped by. I hope you've got yourself a nice cup of tea and uh, grabbed your craft bag so you can join me on the Comfy Red Couch. And if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate knowing I've got some faithful viewers who like to come um, every week and see what I've been up to. So I really do appreciate you. And um, I look forward to filming the podcast so that um, I can show you lots of wonderful things. I don't have any actual material or projects to share with you this week on Material Girl, but what I do have is a PDF that I picked up earlier this week, and I've agreed to sew a dress for my niece. And so what I've chosen to do is the Sally dress by Very Shannon, and uh, just to show you a couple of the Oh, that jumped ahead. So it's just a very simple little girl's dress. And I'm just showing you the first few pages of the pattern that um, don't show any pattern information other than just the dress itself. For the Sally dress, I'll be mixing and matching some materials to make a cute little dress for my niece. And um, it was kind of funny because I had sort of started a cart on fabric dark started a cart on fabric.com earlier this week and was putting in lots of different um, materials that I liked and you know sort of culling them as I, I went so just keeping the cart going and trying to figure out what I was hoping to buy because if I was going to get some material to make this dress for my niece I also wanted some material for me because of course that's how it goes and so I was on fabric.com and I had some lovely material with like a little cat face, just the whiskers. And uh, it was a cotton and steel fabric. And on Thursday, I think it was, I was watching the Vine podcast. And does Kristen not pull up this same material that has been in my cart all week? And I just, I had to panic buy because I thought everybody's going to see this and buy this material because it's just so cute. So I gave my sister-in-law a call and said, okay, we've got to figure out which materials you want for, um, for my niece because I've got to check this cart out soon. So we narrowed down to a couple of dresses that we're going to make, or I'm going to make, um, from some of the material from fabric.com and uh, the box is on its way. So it is very possible for next week that I'm going to have a huge, huge fabric haul to show. But um, in the meantime, I have the very Shannon Sally dress that I was able to share with you that I will be planning on making one or two versions. So um, I did get the PDF version of the pattern. So um, I know I had gotten the plantain shirt that I still have not started yet. And um, so I'm hoping that uh, maybe a, a PDF of a little girl's dress might be actually easier to do than the PDF of a big girl's shirt. But we'll see. I'm, I'm interested to see how I find doing PDF patterns rather than regular patterns. Um, also in Material Girl this week, I did buy some uh, patterns because Butterick McCall's and Vogue had a sale. And so I did get some patterns and they will be jetting their way to me. I'll probably get them early next week. So I'll have some lots of Material Girl for next week, I'm pretty sure. So unfortunately, nothing to show, but lots to talk about that is going to be upcoming 
for my for my sewing my sewing life so I'm excited to start some of those things I did not take the seam ripper to my dress yet I I will get to it and um, hopefully hopefully before too long I've still got to find the bias tape that I like so um, I've got to make a make a date with my car to drive over to fabric land and with my material and see what I like so um, that's what that's what I will be looking forward to doing in the next little while This week in sock knitting, I worked on my Slytherin socks, which I showed the yarn for last week. And that is my Nora George Slytherin. So it's green with sort of a gray blue color and um, self striping, but very, very thin stripes. And there's little spots where um, there's some overlap of color, which is really kind of neat looking. So. Anyway, I'm loving using the Nora George sock yarn and um, this week, last week I started, I had a bit of the cuff done and this week I have a leg done, I have turned a heel and I'm still in the gusset section, but I'm getting there. So top down socks and um, when I did my Beauty and the Beast chapter three socks, I decided to just try my own numbers and figure out the pattern that I like to do myself and um, I put all the sort of my little notes to myself in that project page for chapter three and I copied and pasted same for my um, these are my house socks and um, so they are now in my Ravelry page and the only difference I made was in or I did was in my gusset pickup where in my chapter three socks I picked up 20 stitches in this one I picked up 21 and um, even though the other all the numbers were the same I just picked up the one up extra stitch which means I have an extra gusset round to do to decrease but I'm getting there so hopefully I will have a half finished object for you next week we will see how that goes but um, yeah, very pleased with my sock progress this week. And oh, these are so soft. And um, I just, I love the green. I love how there's little sections of the green that sort of pool together. And um, so even though there's the self-striping aspect, it's, it is kind of a, a nice, a nice bit of, of change there. And in my, my heel, I've got a little bit of a, a fatter stripe happening at the very beginning of the heel. So I will hopefully get these off the needles by the end of July, I'm hoping. And um, I do have plans for my next pair of Beauty and the Beast socks, which are the matching set to the last pair I did for chapter three. I have not started them. I'm hoping to maybe work on those in mid-August. I'm not quite ready to, to jump in doing the, the mustache um, self-striping Beauty and the Beast ones yet. But um, August sounds like a great plan, and I do have a ch um, I do have a project name for that one. And while my first pair were called Chapter Three, I'm going to call my second pra uh, pair Reprise. And um, because, of course, in a musical, you know, when they play the same musical number again, it's called the Reprise. So I am doing a reprise of the same socks that I did earlier this month. So. Anyway, this is my Slytherin My House Sock and um, coming along nicely and I'm looking forward to getting these off the needles. One thing I should mention about uh, my socks is I am doing the Magic Loop and I am using my Haya Haya Sharps for these. Um, I had a bit of an incident with my, um, my signature needle that I really love, um, but Signature is is such a fantastic company that they are replacing it. Um, I had one of the cords break off from the stock when I was on holiday a couple of weeks ago, and when I got back, I contacted them. So hopefully next week I'll have my new Signature in the mail because I really do love working with them. Um, the high highs are nice as well, but I really I just um, I don't know whether it's the the stock on the Signature. I just um, I like it better, although as I, I've talked about in the past, the tips get a bit sometimes funny. But um, I do like the Haya Hayas a lot actually, so I'm planning on ordering a few more pairs of the Haya Hayas so I can have lots of socks on the go. So this is this week in sock knitting and hopefully next week I'll have some more progress for you.
it is time for some yellow in my favorite things. And if you are a returning viewer, you will know that yellow is not one of my favorite things. Um, I can handle it in small little bits. And yes, I purposely wore a yellow shirt under my dress today. Um, I can handle it in small little bits. I do like the color yellow. I just don't like working with it for an extended period of time. I do not like my walls painted yellow. Um, I tend to get a little bit cagey. Um, a few weeks ago, I was really excited to pull down some yellow paper that had been in front of my desk and I replaced it with a beautiful aqua because yellow makes me jumpy, cagey, um, uneasy. Uh, you can probably see I'm getting a little bit like, Aah! anyway, yellow makes me, Aah! anyway, so um, a couple of weeks ago, I was showing off some lovely Nora George that I had picked up. And as I was looking at it, I realized I had picked up the wrong one because I had purchased a bunch of tonal colors in the, um, in Nora George's Superwash BFL with Silk and Cashmere. So this is a 70% BFL with 20% Silk and 10% Cashmere. This is the one I was supposed to have ordered. And what I did by accident when I ordered all the other tonals and the yellow was I ordered this one, which is the 55% Superwash BFL and the 45% Silk. So when you hold them together, they don't really look terribly different, but there's a lot more shine in the BFL silk. So um, as I was podcasting and looking at this and realizing, oh my gosh, I've ordered the wrong one. Um, I don't know if people could see the wheels turning in my head, but uh, yeah, I had ordered the wrong one. So, and I've talked about that before. So I did go online and I was able to thankfully order the BFL Silk Cashmere so that it will go with um, the other colors that I'm hoping to make a sweater with. And uh, so I did receive this one, which is the proper one, in the mail. But I still had the original one that I had um, ordered wrong. And I have some fun plans for this one. Yes, I have fun plans for yellow. And so why am I showing this in my favorite things segment? Because when I ordered the proper cashmere one, it's hard keeping them all, all these yellows straight. Um, I, I knew I didn't want to knit the BFL silk on its own. So luckily there was a BFL silk in the raspberry and this makes me so much happier. Just that, look at just calm. And uh, anyway, so for my favorite things segment, my plan after I finish editing and get everything uploaded today is to wind these two skeins up. And this is the project bag they are going to be popping into. So let's put them in there now. And this is going to become my next whip. And um, so this yellow pollen and the pink raspberry by Nora George is going to become a Shawl Society 4, but my second one, because I have completed the first one already, and um, I'm going to do another one. It's, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So anyway, these are the yarns I'm going to choose for my second one, so I can show that. Last week, I knew what I was going to do. I actually knew what I was going to do when I first saw the pattern. I wanted to do them in these colors, but I just, um, didn't have the yarn in time and then Helen sent me some gorgeous yarn that um, I did the first Shawl Society for and I'm going to show that yarn a little bit later. So, But in the meantime, on my favorite things, this is going to be my next whip. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have a few things in the whip which might make me a little bit uneasy. I like to only have maximum three things going and um, so that's one project bag. I have my other sock project bag going. I'm going to show my third project bag. And I guess my fourth is, it's pretty much done. So it's okay for me to start another project. I showed this last week and this is my brioche um, shawl that I'm making my lemon difficult. And if you tuned in last week, you will see I have not made a dent at all. But what I've decided today 
is that I was going to pull it out because I am going to put my honeycomb progress marker on this so that hopefully when you check in with me next week, um, or if you check in with me next week, I will have made some progress. So we're going to pop this little cute little honeycomb that uh, came in the little skein in the big wool um, Winnie the Pooh set that um, Helen, the Hundred Acre Wood set. So Helen had des uh, designed a gorgeous shawl, the Hundred Acre Wood, and I test knit that one. I, I love that shawl. And uh, so I had, uh, I got a kit and it had this beautiful little honeycomb progress keeper. So I have now put it on here. So hopefully next week when I go to show you what I've done, it won't be here. It'll be way down here or who knows. So anyway, this is crafty plans for the upcoming week. I'd like to get back to doing the brioche. It was a lot of fun to work on for sure, but um, the time this week was spent on my sock and on my Shawl Society form getting that finished off. So I will get back to this though because I am enjoying it. So hopefully next week when you tune in, there will be some progress made because I really want to feel like I've made a dent in learning how to do brioche. So that is in this bag and hopefully next week we'll see some progress. Now the next bag is my favorite things bag and in my favorite things bag there is a finished object but I cannot show you the finished object. And uh, so for people who are returning, um, you know that I do a lot of test knitting for Helen. And for those of you who are new, I do a lot of test knitting for Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. And uh, so I am testing the Shawl Society and this is the August release. So it is now done, sort of, in that I still have to secure my ends and I need to block it. But I wanted to leave it in this bag until I showed it on the podcast because um, I didn't want to crumple it up and put it in here when, uh, when I was going to be podcasting. So I cannot show you the shawl itself, but I can show you the yarn. And the yarn is really, really lovely. Um, just a quick, not showing off the shawl at all, but this is my favorite things bag and it's got all of the, you know, uh, kittens with whiskers and the flying geese and the, the mittens, my brown paper packages, which always make me happy. And then inside is uh, lined with Edelweiss. So that is what I can show you from my project bag and that is all I'm gonna show you from inside my project bag other than what I pulled out of my project bag, which is the yarn that I used for the Shawl Society 4, which will be released on August 3rd. And um, so this is, I think it's Grey Baron Goose is the name of this yarn. And of course the actual tag is in there. And it's a beautiful grey and it's got little pops of blue and purple in it and just a lovely tonal, um, really, really pretty. And then this, oh, I saw Helen's version and just her sample and, you know, sent an email saying, oh my goodness, that pink is amazing. And then the next thing I knew, I had this in the mail. And uh, so what I've done is I've actually done a reverse because it is a two color shawl. And so where in Helen's sample, she's used pink as um, one of the two colors, I've just reversed it. So I've done it the other way around. So I'm excited to um, get it all blocked out. And it was funny, as I was casting off the other day, I took a quick look at my progress and just was, Oh, it's so pretty. It's really, really pretty. It's, it's a little bit different, um, but just I think when when everybody sees it, the, the, it's and especially as it was coming off the needles, it was just really superb. So I'm looking forward to being able to share that in the next couple of weeks on August 3rd or um, I guess the, the Sunday after August 3rd is when I will share it on here, but of course I'll put something on, on Instagram. But just lovely to work with. So this is Laughing Turtle Dove 
and it has gorgeous little speckles. It's got these little um, purples, and there's this one color that I really love, and it is like a, a pop of, of lime green in here, and just lovely, lovely, lovely yarn. Makes me so happy, and it was lovely to work with, so soft, and the two together. I, I'm a sucker for pink and gray. Pink and gray looks amazing together. So um, my favorite, my hundred acre wood, my hundred acre wood shawl, which I just mentioned a few minutes ago when I was putting the stitch marker, the um, progress keeper, onto my brio shawl, was made with the Madeline Tosh Cosmet uh, Cosmopolitan London Cosmopolitan yarn, and I also used Madeline Tosh kitten, and it's a pink and a gray, and I love that shawl and I have no doubt that I'm going to love this shawl too so um, I think I'm going to keep it for me because it's really really pretty so anyway that is the yarn for the shawl society for that I couldn't show you last week but because it's been released I can finally show you and for my favorite things I think that's all I've got to share yeah that's all I've got to share for now and as I said no finished objects that I can show but some some work's in progress, so hopefully some more work will be done over the next week. I've got lots of crafty plans happening in my head, and uh, sometimes though, sometimes my head, it's kind of like, you know, biting off more than you can chew, or, you know, you've got the, the big eyes, and then your stomach realizes it can't eat all of the meal that you've chosen out. That's kind of how I am with my, my knitting projects, you know, I think, oh, I'm going to get to here. And then life happens and I don't get to there and I've got to learn to accept that sometimes I am not super person, I am not super knitter. I just try and take each project as it comes and um, as we all do. So anyway, next week I hope to have a little bit more to show in both my favorite things and in It's a Softness. This week, the mailman was good to me. He brought me the yarn that I already showed, which was the Nora George and the uh, pollen and the raspberry, which I talked about. And uh, he also bought me a really, really big package from Hedgehog Fibers, so I'm excited to show that. Uh, that is luckily all I got in the mail this week. Um, next week, I'm expecting quite a few things, so uh, I've already... Starting to starting to prepare the th the thinking for next week's episode, and I'm I'm thinking I might have to call it uh, Boku to yarn porn or something like that because there's going to be a lot coming next week. But for now, let's deal with what came in the mail this week. And as I said, that included some hedgehog fibers. And a couple of weeks ago, the day before I left for my camping trip, hedgehog fibers had a yarn update. I haven't been as excited about the Hedgehog Fibers updates recently. I, I used to be a club member and um, I don't know, I just, uh, there's so many lovely yarns and Hedgehog is definitely one of them, but um, I just sort of had fallen off the bandwagon for a little bit. But then I got an email telling me that something super, super special was going to be in. I had to make sure that I made that update. And um, as I said a few moments ago, I used to do the clubs and my absolute favorite club that I ever received was my Rose Hip. And this email said that Rose Hip was going to be re-released. So I had to get myself some more. And funnily enough, with the Hedgehog Sock Rose Hip, um, that's the one on my Ravelry page that I seem to get the most inquiries about asking me if I want to to sell it and no I I I love this color it's it's probably one of my top five colors in my stash and I do have a <sighs> very big stash so um, so this one to make to make it into my top five is is pretty good. So, um, so when I saw they were going to re-release some of that, I thought I needed to get some. So another thing I've also been contemplating doing is uh, bowing to the Find Your Fade 
shawl knitting craze and I still haven't picked up the pattern yet but I've been thinking about it for a little bit it's sitting in my cart one day I'll get to it but what I did do was pick up a find your fade yarn kit from hedgehog fibers which has the glorious glorious rose hip in it so it has um, I, this is pollen so I've got two pollens uh, Nora George pollen and the HHF pollen came in the, the mail this week. So this is pollen. I believe this one is fool's gold. And then this one is harvest, which I do have um, harvest already. This one is uh, monarch. And then of course my favorite, which is rosehip. It also had sari. And the last one here is poison. So a beautiful pink Find Your Fade, and this was the one that when you see the photo of Find Your Fade, this is the fade that was used. So I did get it. Sorry about all the crinkling, crinkly loveliness, um, but uh, I don't want to take these out of the package at this point. So anyway, this is the Find Your Fade that I'm hoping to eventually get to at some point. Um, we shall see. Um, I do love all of the colors individually, so if I don't get to the Find Your Fade, it's not a complete loss. But in addition to buying the Find Your Fade, I also got on Skinny Singles another Sari. And because Rosehip was originally done on Sock, I decided I wanted to have one on um, the Skinny Singles. And I'm not sure what I'm going to make, but I wanted to get the two of them, so maybe I might do something together with them. But since the rose hip sock is my absolute, absolute favorite, I did get one more on sock, and then I also got a sari on sock, and another, even though I have this in my stash, um, another harvest on sock. And actually, I think I like this harvest better than my original one, but... I'd have to hold them together and, and really compare, but uh, so I did have a huge hedge 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 hedge. <laughs> I did have a huge hedgehog fiber haul this week. Ha 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 Lots of H's there. <laughs> huge hedgehog fiber haul. And um, so I have lots of knitting ahead of me and uh, lots of beautiful bright colors. I love those pinks and, and bright colors. So that is um, what I purchased and there is no more, which is probably a good thing. So next week, there's going to be a lot. As I said, there's going to be Boku de Yarn Porn next week and lots of lovely little things to share. I'm really excited because I know it's going to be a fun mail week. So I'm looking forward to sharing that next week. And it is finally tea time and I am so excited about tea time this week. I don't have any fancy mugs um, but I do have something exciting to share. This is and it's cold now because I, got, I, I asked my husband to pick this up for me this morning because I really wanted it for tea time and um, this is Tim Horton's steep tea which I have a huge addiction to and finally opening it and I'm going to finally get my sip. It is just a builder's brew type of tea, but I think there's like some huge shots of extra caffeine in here. And But the best thing about this is, so this is the special cup they've come up with for the Canada 150 celebration. And just around Canada Day, they had a special roll up the rim. Now for anybody who's Canadian, you're just saying, yeah, Tracy, we know, we know. But for anybody who's not, I'm going to share a little bit of my excitement about this with you. So this is um, for the Canada 150 celebration. They have come up with a special roll up the rim. And what roll up the rim is, is a contest where basically you have your cup and once you're finished, you roll up the rim and it tells you whether you won a prize or not. And instead of telling you basically that you're a loser and you lost, well, they're just saying Happy Canada Day 150 for all the losing cups. So this is what the roll up the rim looks like when it's all done. And usually roll up the rim happens in 
mid-ish February, so around, around Valentine's Day, the Roll Up the Rim, the annual one that happens every year, starts and it lasts till around mid-March and I can go most of the year without my tea addiction but as soon as Roll Up the Rim comes I love Roll Up the Rim time so it's one of those I try to get over a few times I'm, I'm not a daily um, Tim Horton tea person um, except for I'm trying to I'm trying to get a daily one in with this because it's a really short period of time and uh, the last roll up the rim I guess it stops on the 21st which is Friday coming up so I'm trying to get as much roll up the rim in as I can so anyway that is my loser one but uh, so today we will see how I do on this one so today when I do my epilogue I'm hoping to roll up the rim and I gotta do it in one take or I'm, I, you know we'll see how that goes so it is not a anything, I mean, it's it's special enough, I love it more than just a bag tea. It's a nice, strong black tea, and I do drink, this is, when I go to Tim Hortons, I say, large black steep tea, please, and this is what I get. And so it's nothing that's absolutely spectacular tasting. It's a builder's brew, but it's got a good shot of caffeine. And when I'm really, really wanting a hit, or when I'm in the... When I'm in the drive, when I'm driving somewhere, this is my this is my beverage of choice. So, as I said, nothing hugely special, but special to me, and uh, something fun to share on the podcast this week with the roll up the rim ending later this week. So, I did go out yesterday to Pippin's Tea, which is on Queen Street East in Toronto, and I did pick up some stuff. But I'm actually going to share that next week. Next week's going to be like a total haul week, I know, but. Um, this week I just thought I would share one of my favorite things in tea, and that is my Tim Hortons, so. Cheers! Okay, time to get serious. And maybe a little bit crafty. This week I realized that I'm running out of storage solutions for my yarn. And I have a beautiful knitting room up on my third floor. I've got my sewing machine in there. I've got my yarn in there. I've got fabric in there. I've got a spinning wheel in there. It's a lovely space. But it's getting too small for my yarn consumption. So I'm also thinking about spreading out. So next to my lovely nitty crafty sewing room on the third floor is my husband's office. So I'm thinking of starting to move some of my yarn into that space. Slowly of course, because of course you don't want to, you know, if you put a lot in at one time then there might be a freak out happen, but if you start slowly moving it in, Maybe he'll realize that he slowly needs to start moving out. Because of course, it makes sense that beside my sewing and blocking and knitting and spinning room, I should have a storage room as well for all my lovely things, right? I mean, it only seems natural. I mean, there's nothing wrong with him taking his work down to the kitchen table and working down there, is there? I don't think so. Anyway, so, true confessions, I might be taking over some more space because crafts are in part important and yarn needs to feel loved and it needs a space of its own. It needs lots of space. It needs bright space. Yeah, I'll keep telling myself this. Let's see how long it takes me to move in. Mm-hmm. Third floor domination. Thank you so much for coming to join me this week on the Comfy Red Couch. I always appreciate the time you spend with me and um, love the fact that uh, you, you do take the time out of your busy schedule to sit down and watch. So I hope that you had a lovely cup of tea and that you had a lovely relax breathing time, taking care of yourself, that you got some progress done on whatever craft it is that you were working on, 
and I hope to see you next week on the Comfy Red Couch. Bye! I do love my Tim Hortons tea. It's nice and strong. Now, I've only got one take to do this, so hopefully I do this right. Lid off. Ready for roll up the rim? <sighs> Happy Candidate A 150. Not what I was hoping for, but maybe next time. I have to say, my favorite thing to win is a free coffee, because then you get to play all again. So, anyway, cheers, have a wonderful week. Bye.